This is CBS Eye on the World, the New World Report with Joseph Umar, the Executive Director of Secure Free Society. And we're very pleased to welcome a special guest, Mauricio Claver former president of the IDB. The IDB is an acronym that stands for the Inter-American Development Bank. And Mauricio headed the bank from 2020 till 2022, till recently. So before we investigate the surprises and twists and turns of his time in office and what the we'll ask what the IDB does because it's a it's a part of the whole of the new world development 30% owned by the US and very very much involved in the development of the region Latin America especially since the crisis of the pandemic Mauricio Mr President Mr former president a very good evening <laughs> to you thank you very much what what is the mission of the IDB when you took con- uh, when you took command in 2020? Good evening to you. Well, thank you so much, John. Thank you for the opportunity. And well, one thing is what the what the mission of the bank was when I took over in 2020, and what it was supposed to be in 1959 when it was founded by President Eisenhower and by then President President Jack. Kubitschek, the mission was supposed to be to support development uh, throughout Latin America and the Caribbean, precisely as a result of the Cuban Revolution, to prevent the kind of the growth uh, of communism in Latin America and the, Car- Car- in the Caribbean. So it was kind of created kind of with a theme of uh, fighting or, or preventing the spread of communism after the Cuban Revolution. Uh, then by the time I got there in 2020, ironically, it was a bank that was almost completely taken over by China and Chinese interests and had become the steward for Chinese interests infrastructure projects throughout Latin America and the Caribbean, despite the 30 percent shareholder. And I think that part of the, of the United States, and I think that the reason for that was because the United States kind of lessened throughout the years its interest. And eventually the large shareholders of the region, namely Argentina, Mexico and and, and Brazil, uh, you know, all of the worst practices of Latin America and the Caribbean got in, imported into the bank. The United States kind of stepped aside in its role, despite the despite the 30 percent shareholding. And it became a real reflection of uh, of the region, which is when China saw in 2010 the great opportunity to come in and have it become its big uh, steward throughout the region. And and that's exactly what happened and, and how they coerced their way through. Joseph, you have a question for Mauricio. I do. Uh, Mauricio, you mentioned China, and, and I think it's a well-known uh, data point at this point that China's influence in Latin America has grown uh, considerably over the last 20 years. But many people maybe don't know about China's influence at the IDB. Can you take us back? How far does that influence go? What is the origin? What is the source of it? Can you take us back to that? Yeah, so the Inter-American Development Bank was probably the worst run international financial institution over the last 20 years. And therefore, as a result, during the financial crisis in 2008, 2009, it was exposed, and I believe this, a multilateral development bank was exposed to subprimes. And as such was almost a billion dollars in the red. The United States at the time, obviously we had our own issues, did not want to capitalize the bank because obviously we had other priorities and China saw a golden opportunity. So they came in and they're the only one of the 48 shareholders, which are countries, one of the only four, uh, one of the 48 countries that paid what was called quote unquote, an admission fee to come in with a very small shareholding, but to get their foot in the door. That admission fee was about half a billion dollars. I like to call it an institutional kickback because frankly, that's what it was. Because at the end of the day, what they bought themselves was the bank to literally walk them through the through, through, throughout the region. And that was the beginning. And if you look at the rise of Chinese investment and in infrastructure projects throughout the region, which now we're also familiar with, it was done with the support of the IDB. So it is not an exaggeration to say that Chinese growth in infrastructure investment and strategic investments throughout Latin America and the Caribbean was most of the big projects were all co-financed by the IDB, of which the United States is a 30 percent shareholder. Therefore, we, the United States, over the last 10 years, ended up co-financing most of the Chinese projects in the region. Fact. <laughs> 